G'day guys, Clint here at recording episode number 59 of The Full Landscape with David Oborn from Hunter and FXL.com. FXL is a lighting range that Hunter Industries has recently added to their Australian stock offering. Now, for those of you that have been following the podcast for any number of years, you'll know that Hunter Industries is a big part of what we do. Uh, adding a lighting range to their range in Australia has just opened up so many more opportunities for our business and landscapers in South Australia and outside of South Australia. Uh, it's quite a different lighting range. So Hunter have brought their Dakota technology that have they've been doing for decades and they've put it into a lighting range to make something vastly different to, to what you're used to. In this podcast, David and I talk about FX and his experiences in lighting and his background, but we also talk about things that might benefit you as a landscape contractor in adding the lighting range to the things that you do and then hopefully increasing the uh, quality of the landscapes that you're providing for your clients, but also uh, the bottom line and turnover of your business. So uh, I hope you get some value from this. If there's anything that we missed or if you've got any questions about anything lighting or anything irrigation, do not hesitate to hit us up uh, via DM or you can reach out to us using the contact details that we've put in the comments section below and please if you haven't subscribed yet uh mr uh mr ward our new videographer told me that we have a uh, number of people that are watching our content but have not subscribed so if you can please subscribe to the channel and i uh, hope you enjoy this one thank you for coming in good morning um for all of our listeners and the people watching if you could just give us a brief introduction on who you are and I guess how you fit into the landscape industry. All right, um, so uh, name is David Oborn. I'm the Southern California FX rep for Hunter Industries. Uh, my accent is uh, I'm obviously not from Southern California. I uh, actually came out of New Zealand and at the ripe old age of 20, after doing a fitter and turner apprenticeship, I got to go and travel around the world with, it, with the company. Yep. Uh, ending up in the US and spent a year there uh, commissioning and building a factory for a rooftop manufacturing plant, one of James Hardy's plants over there. Um, while I was there, I met, met a very pretty young lady, and uh, so we had a nice long distance relationship. I came back to the US and uh, ended up working for a landscape company and uh, as their laborer. And being a fitter and turner, I knew hydraulics, I knew some of the electrical stuff and then they came through and they says hey we need to do irrigation so i started asking about hydraulics and pressures and they go no it's plastic pipe and we stick it together and that actually came fairly easily easy to me and then we started uh, talking about outdoor lighting and uh outdoor lighting i says is it 220 is it 440 is it single phase and they're like no it's just it's low voltage outdoor lighting direct burial wire and it's almost like a little lego set and uh, so kind of had an aptitude to that so the gentleman that i was working for was a landscape architect in southern california and what he would do is he would uh, send you out to work but he was also very happy to go and teach you the uh, the trade and the tricks along the way so um, very fortunately for me uh, we ended up working with different manufacturers hunter and other associated ones and uh, they saw i had an aptitude for this thing and had a funny accent so they says hey come on board as our first of all as our technical rep and kind of worked my way up through there um, initially starting off in the irrigation side of the world uh, irrigation is very large in southern california basically if you don't water it it dies and so it's it's pretty important over there um, but always kind of came back to lighting lighting was was fun it was something that you could do a very unique design uh, you and i could both do completely d different designs as long as you go and follow some rules um, they all just kind of work together and uh, it was it was the fun part of the world uh, as a contractor it was profitable it was something that with the in-store was fairly short and uh, it was also the one thing that people got very excited about. So you got picked up f by Hunter from being in the field? Uh, actually, yes, from being out in the field. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Um, and how, so how long you were over there in your, what, your early 20s? How yep. early did you move over to Hunter? So I moved in there. I did a short spell with them on the irrigation side. It was yep. their specification rep. Yep. And I did that for about two and a half years. And then so from there, I, I still had my love for lighting. So I actually went and worked for a company by the name of Nightscaping, who was, was kind of the granddaddy of outdoor lighting. They started in the mid 50s. And uh, so he was kind of the granddaddy of lighting, always wanted to work for somebody like that. So spent eight or nine years with him. Um, he became ill, passed away. And then right around that time, Hunter Industries actually purchased 
a company, FX Luminaire, uh, both family owned companies out of Southern California. And so I was their first official Hunter slash FX rep. Kind of was all coming coming home to Hunter Industries, knew the, knew the company, knew the, you know, kind of the ethos behind it. And uh, it was a nice, nice transition and have been there ever since. So it obviously made sense to Hunter to grab you back. Mm -hmm. And you've got that lighting pedigree. Yes. Like it just, right. perfect. It all, it all just fed. And had, you were in Southern California the whole time, you haven't moved around? No, so I, I spent two years in Florida on the, uh, on the East Coast, the Southeast. Um, loved Florida, it's a great warm place to be, uh, but it's not, it's, it uh, didn't have the volume of people, didn't have, it was, it's Southern California, at least for me, it's kind of a, it's, a, it's, it's where the work is. It's busier? It's busier. Yeah, absolutely. Is that, do you find that has negative impacts, I guess, from moving around and like traffic and shopping? Oh, or, absolutely. You don't mind that? Yeah, so we get, you know, the, the place is fairly compact, but uh, you will spend an hour on a freeway. Yep. And uh, nobody, if you want to get from A to B, just figure it's going to take you an hour. And uh, you get to go and know that rush hour you try to, try to avoid. Yep. You either get out before rush hour, you get out after rush hour. But uh, you, you, your life revolves around freeways and vehicles. <laughs> So how so Hunter buys FX Luminaire, mm -hmm. um, and I guess obviously we did some uh, training last night, so I'll probably ask questions that you've already covered. But uh, so Hunter kept it as almost like an independent division for a long time, right? So we started off uh, the two; they would be actually be side by side. It was a, almost a subsidiary or a little brother along the way. Um, but what they found was we would operate. Uh, we have a distribution model and so we, we manufacture the fixtures we sell them through places such as yourself yep. uh, to contractors yep. and we found that uh, i would walk into a distributor and my counterpart on the hunter side would do the same thing so it was it wasn't a smart use of our time mm. so whether it was a distri distributor whether it was a contractor whether it was a specifier, we were kind of doing the job twice. Yep. So we had this idea that we kind of just blended each other. And as I said previously, I'd had an irrigation background, so it was very easy for me. And I probably do a 70-30 lighting to irrigation. If I'm on a job site or I see an opportunity, I could still talk irrigation fairly intelligently. But uh, And my irrigation counterparts kind of do the same thing in Officer. Yeah, okay. Um so in in the i'm interested to learn about the us market and then obviously how it all ties together for here so yep. um fx is well how long have hunter owned fx uh about the last 14 years okay so obviously um we're only now seeing fx as an available product in australia now yes what's the what what would have caused a delay of 14 years and then i guess what are the things that as a business you've had to overcome to get those lights to be able to be sold around the rest of the world? Sure, so, so obviously we come in there and uh, so Hunter comes along and they go and purchase a, a lighting manufacturer. It was a little foreign to them. Uh, we had the same way of going to business, but selling you know, uh, lighting compared to irrigation products, even though it follows some of the same rules, they're two different components. Uh, irrigation has a lot more automation component to the manufacturing. Lighting, the numbers are a lot less, uh, but Hunter was is a worldwide company, obviously through Australia and Europe and everywhere else. Uh, the FX side of it was pretty much only the US market, and so the numbers were smaller. So it's been it's been a growth over time uh, of just expanding it, and why it's taken us so long to go and adopt into the Australian and New Zealand and and the Pacific Rim is actually it's it's all about the CE the uh, the it's all the rating systems yep. so our cord sets our wires that come through just the way the fixtures are put together uh, have to be slightly different to be able to go and walk into the Australian market okay and so obviously there's um, time and money that goes into that yes and so it's just it's purely time and money waiting and, till, till yep. you've got that time yes and the money well, yeah yeah. And, and we're, we're actually, you know, the business in the US is still growing very strongly. So we've got to take care of that market and become good. Yep. Um, and once we've done that, it's no use walking into a market overseas, still trying to get your feet on the ground, trying to go and improve your skill set and your product and your product lines. You might as well do it at home before you venture offshore. Do you have an insight on how big the lighting or the res well, I guess the garden lighting market is in the US and where you guys sit? Like is are so you, is still a small player or it, you, you yes. have a decent so, so currently I've got over forty competing manufacturers in the US market. Yep. Some that will sell direct to anybody via online, via direct selling. Yep. Um, we with our model by going through distribution through the hunter 
um, process where we're a medium player in a huge market. The market itself is massive. It's a multi-billion dollar market. Just um, in the US. Just in the US and uh, opportunities for growth are massive. Our kind of sweet spot is high-end residential lighting yep. currently. But again, there's opportunity in the lower end and the residential side. You can go into the commercial market, say uh, events, wineries, uh, strip malls, yep. all of those things where we're very good at the low voltage. We've kind of dabbled our toes in the high voltage industry um, and we're going to, we'll continue that growth. And what, I guess, just identify opportunities and make decisions as you go. As yes. You go, is, yep. that gonna, is that gonna fit our, our strategic direction or not? A absolutely, so our strategic direction, it will alter and it gets, um, it gets influenced by uh, contractors and architects and specifiers and people asking for things. Yeah. Uh, they want to go and have either adaptations to existing products or they're like, hey, we need to go and uh, there's, there's a bunch of the, the high voltage industry. There's, again, massive amounts of opportunity in there, but we need to make sure that we're good at what we do and then we take care of the, the things. Um, I know we'll talk about smart control, yep. uh, but there's, there's things such as motion sensing as an example with low voltage that we haven't touched on. Um, there's the home automation side of the business, which is in its infancy, but, but growing extremely quickly as well. So in the irrigation market, obviously you have a very um, large research and development, I don't even know how to describe it, budget and, and staff. Yes. Is that the, the, the same intent with, with lighting to kind of build up an R&D or do you have that already? Right, so, we, so um, because Hunter Industries is, uh, again, from the engineering standpoint, we've got dedicated engineers that will work on the Hunter side and the same thing on the lighting side. We also have a golf division. We get into um, some other sister companies that we've adopted along the way, but we've got dedicated people to those positions. Um, as far as our marketing departments, they have a lot of crossover. Yep. There's people that will slant towards one, um, whether it's photography, whether it's content, whether it's literature, whether it's um, um, huge online presence. So we take care of all of that stuff. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, but that side of the business is kind of, it's a, there's a lot of crossover that comes with it. So if you were looking to develop a new sensor or, um, you know, whether or not it's a sunlight sensor or a motion sensor, that would be something that you'd do internally? Yes, yep. yes, we've got engineering sides. We actually have product managers, both on the fixture side and the control side. And so they go and get allocated to that part of the business. First of all, you've got to see if it's worth digging into. Mm. Um, it can be a great idea, but if it, you send it to market and nobody buys it, it's not going to do very well for the business. That was, I guess, well, partially what I was thinking about with the Australian market as a percentage of, or as a population compared to the US market. It's mm -hmm. so much smaller. Yeah. I'm assuming it's, it's a, I guess it's a tough decision to look at spending the money to get the CE certification to bring in a range for one country. I'm not sure, do, do the does the work that you've had to do for Australia or does it replicate into Europe or New Zealand? Yes, it does. Yep. So a lot of the same uh, restrictions come into it, whether you're going to Europe, England, France, wherever that is, or if you're going down to the Pacific Rim, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia. So a lot of those same rules do apply. And uh, we don't have the total line available in Australia yet. We are, once you've got your system down of going the regulatory areas where you go and um, go and get it all certified, you can sit there and just, it's, it's a rinse and repeat yeah. thing after that. Yeah, that makes sense. So in, in the US, um, I guess if you could talk me through the, what the lighting industry looks like at a, like obviously the, the audience that listens to this is going to be predominantly landscapers in Australia um, and the intention is for me to be able to kind of educate them as much as I can around uh, new products that are coming to market and yep. I guess new techniques sales techniques um, but also an awareness of what's happening because obviously um, it's not uncommon for an Australian market to watch a US market and then replicate it in a period that follows. Are the landscapers the, the people that are installing garden lighting in the US or are there lighting specific contractors? How does it, how does it all the, kind of work? There's, there's actually, there's both. Uh, I would say 80 to 85% of, of contractors are primarily started with irrigation, hardscapes, softscapes. And so there'll be general lighting will be part of a, of a complete package that they will do. Yep. Um, there are people that specialize solely in irrigation, people that solely work in just the lighting business and they go and see that it's that they either have an aptitude or it's a very profitable part of the business. Yep. But typically what will happen is uh, if you're a contractor out there, you would meet with your customers 
and you would do a presentation and part of your presentation is whereas before it would just be plants and irrigation now it's plants and irrigation oh and by the way lighting yep. um, and and other you know sundry things that come around that as well lighting obviously feels like a luxury item and, and I, I guess irrigation feels like a luxury item to some capacity what i used to find when we would like i guess 10 years ago you'd find that when a landscape package was put together the lighting would be if anything was going to get removed it was lighting and irrigation uh -huh. is that you finding that's still yep. the case so uh value engineering right it's uh so lighting in itself is a is a reasonable part of the budget you can expect somewhere up into between eight and ten percent of your budget could be lighting for a new landscape for a new light yep. landscape yes yep. and it depends on the complexity and the control side of it you can put it in very inexpensively or you can do it a little bit more but what we're finding now is where we're say 10 to 15 years ago whereas it was a really was a luxury and people did not see the value in it now now it's almost an automatic thing that is just not essential, but uh, it's something. When you think about it, people go out and they work hard for their money. Um, summertime, not so much, but during the middle of the year to the winter, they go work hard during the day. They're, they're leaving quite often at dark and they're coming home at the dark. And uh, so when they come home, they wanna be able to go out into the backyard and uh, cook with fire. They wanna go and have a beverage. They wanna be able to enjoy that. And you can do it uh, where from the inside of your house, but you've just paid a good, some for your landscape why not be able to enjoy it for that extra half of the time after dark yeah that makes sense that makes a lot of sense i mean where we still haven't got lighting at my house and obviously that's we'll have that discussion after we need to sort out my backyard's lighting but yeah once the sun's down we can't see anything beyond i guess what the outdoor structures have got lighting attached to them and if you've got a large block which you know australia is not well it's getting less and less common but there's a right. lot of large blocks you can't you, you lose that usability don't you so yes you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and then shaving your use window down by by a third yeah. potentially yeah that right. makes sense and the other part of it is everybody at least in california the people i deal with are always trying to bring the indoors out and the outdoors in so that so that uh cut off between the back door or the back patio or being able to go and barbecue outside or enjoy fire pits um, and your usable space if you think about it, if you've got X amount of square square meters on the inside, well, your kind of your barrier stops. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can have that same environment in your backyard, side yard, whatever that is, then now with lighting, you can go out of an evening, whether it's to cook, whether it's to enjoy, whether it's whatever that thing is, you've just extended your living space. Yeah, okay. That's a good, a very good sales point for the landscapers when they're going out and, uh -huh. and meeting their clients. Um, what are some techniques or, or um, I guess, sales aids that you're seeing that being used in the US? Like if some, if a landscaper was going out to try and, um, you know, present a, a quote or a proposal for a backyard and they wanted the client to take the lighting, are there things that they're doing over there that's working? Sure. So we've got a couple of different ways of doing it. Uh, we've got what we're seeing, at least in the US, is the, the contractors will go and have physical fixtures and they will go and take them out to a job site, potentially going setting up a little demonstration area of an evening, uh, going through and then setting them up and, and actually being able to go and show what their homes will look like after dark with lighting in there. And uh, obviously first responsibility is the safety side of the world. So if you're talking about steps, if you're talking about services, surfaces, um, all of those things, we take care of the safety first. As in when you're designing a lighting system, you'd concentrate on that as a first priority? Yes. Yep. So that's that's a responsibility from from contractors to do that for because, you know, if you're coming home at night, the last thing you want to be doing, if you've got guests coming over, um, people tripping on stairs on different surfaces is never a good thing. No. And then followed very closely by security. Um, bad people tend to go to dark places. It's pretty easy, it's pretty simple that. So if you want to go and keep bad people away, you go and light it. Yep. And you don't light it like a parking lot, you go and light it so it's aesthetically pleasing, so it's safe, so it, but it makes sure that it's secure. Um, you can quite often sit down with somebody and if you find out that they got followed home last night, it's amazing, they will pay any amount to go and feel safe, yep. right? And lighting is a feeling. Yep. Um, and so that safety part of the world can be huge. And uh, you know, if, if your significant other 
got followed home, again, you will do whatever you need to do, yep. whether it's gates or lighting, just to go and make people feel secure in their home. So the contractor would take out the light fittings to a site and set them up? Yes, are potentially. They, are they setting them up on a, a batteries or would they run it off of a controller? Or So you can do it through a batteries. You can go and have a whole bank of batteries. It becomes a little cumbersome. Um, so what we find, it's a lot easier to go and have some cable, to go and have a transformer or a power reducer. Yep. And we'll go and set that up and we'll set up basically a little vignette. So if you think about your own yard, um, we're not going to go through and set up absolutely every fixture that we're going to put in there. Yep. But what we'll do is we'll take an area of it and we'll go and show what it can look like. And then basically what we'll do is rinse and repeat um, throughout the design. Yep. And so the contractor might set that up and then come back once the sun was down and yes. and be there for it? Or could they just leave it and the client They, they, they could absolutely yeah. leave it. It's always, I feel that it's better for the contractor, the person that's going to be doing the installation to actually come back of an evening and get feedback from, from said homeowner. Yeah. Um, you go and say, hey, we love this, we love this. That one, not so much. So you go and, and, and what I find is most important is to go and see what the not so much, because the last thing you want to do is do a beautiful lighting installation that you love but your homeowner is not happy with it. Yeah, right? that's a good point. I think sometimes in all fields, even in sales, we can get caught up, um, put, I guess, putting onto the client what we think we, we would do Correct. rather than letting the client yep. tell us what they want. And it all comes down to taste, right? Yep. So your taste could be perfectly aligned with mine or, or it may not, neither good nor bad, but uh, that's that comes into it quite a lot. <laughs> The taste is a beautiful segue into um, the fact that you guys have lights that can do some pretty crazy things. Um, talk to me about the, um, I guess the, the I, I remember you last night you are talking about a pyramid of, of, of choice almost. Um, and so obviously people can choose a quite a simple range from FX yes. and then go right up to change color. Yes. Um, that's the taste was segueing to that because I'm going to be the, the guy that sticks in stupid colors in my house, sure. which is probably against the majority of the world's taste. But um, yeah, talk to me about that. Okay, so so what's available and what we, what people are buying? I right. Guess. So so quite often, so the entry level with uh, some very simplistic level of control, where typically what we're seeing is you will have some kind of photoelectric cell device. Um, and it might be an astronomical timer, but it knows that at sunset, depending on what time that is, and it, remember it changes every day of the year, you've got a device that your lights will come on at sunset. And that's a, like a sensor that that um, deter, like that re reads the amount of light in the- It can do, it can also be an astronomical one where it's got a smart technology built into the timing device yep. where it just knows that today it will be dark at 8.43. Oh, so it's, it's pulling that from- um, from, from historical data. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be correct to within minutes. Yes, of, yeah. absolutely. Because the biggest thing is, you know, it, it's a little bit like having sprinklers on when it's raining. Yep. You just like, oh, come on, really? Yep. Um, if you've got lights on during the day or before dark yep. or, or not having your lights on after dark, it's just not something you want. So if you can get the lights to come on as close to sunset as possible, yep. then you're, you're doing your job well. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. So they're the basic, basic, you can have basic lights, basic on off. Yes. So, so if you can imagine um, from an interior setting that if I had one major light switch in, in the house and you walk into your home and you just go and go click and every light on your home turns on to 100%. Yep. And then at a predetermined time, when you go to bed, 11, 11.30, everything turns off. Yep. Click. That's how we currently set outdoor lighting. Um, and so it's an all on, all off situation. And that's kind of the entry level for it. And that's since the 50s, 60s, that's how we have taken care of lighting. 50s and 60s, I'm guessing this is a super luxury item. Yes. Yep. yep. Right. And again, it's so same things. It was a very high end residential. Yep. It was people that entertained a lot, people with money. Yep. Um, Southern California, the temperature is very pleasant, both during the summer and winter. Yep. So if you're entertaining, it was, yeah. And it was it was also very simplistic. There was a couple of footlights, a couple of lights, and, and the lamps came from the automotive industry because okay. they were low voltage. Yep. They're low voltage because you didn't need to have a degree in electrical. And so you could do it as a DYI back in the day or as a contractor, you didn't need to have, and that's how the whole industry started. Okay. So that's the basic on off. And I, interestingly, interestingly, you mentioned 100%. So obviously the next level there's 
Yes. So our next big thing has become dimming. So being able to control the intensity of the light for a number of different reasons. So if you think about lighting, um, as your plant material grows, it could start off as a three meter tall tree. And so you'll have a light that will shine up adequately to the top of the tree. Fantastic. Trees, plant material have this weird habit, they grow. So between one, three, five, ten years, the trees, the plant material grows. You also want to go and be able to change out your, uh, your lamps to that fixture with a, with a brighter intensity. So now what you had five years ago, which was three meters tall, and now it's 10 meters tall, you need to be able to go and adjust that brightness. And then conversely, um, as a design, you don't want to overlight or underlight your property um, because you know we've all seen properties that have been overlit, that become glary, they become uncomfortable. Like one of those prison escape. Very kind of, much so. Just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so when you think about overlighting, you think about castle yards, prisons, yep. um, that kind of thing. Yep. It not not you know that feeling thing again. It's just not aesthetically pleasing. Yep. Um, and so the that. Um, there's, I guess, adjustable th that light. So, are your fixed are your fittings? You're able to remove um, a wattage and upgrade it to another to a higher globe. Is that yes? Or so, a, what's well, so, not called a globe? Is it? Uh, well, so so uh, so a little bit different in the US. They're called fixtures and lamps. And the lamps themselves are either what we would call a drop-in, yep. so you can simply quite remove them, take them in, put another one in there. Um, and then we've got another series which are integrated. Yep. And the integrated are both replaceable once they burn out, okay. once after their time is spent, 10, yep. 15, whatever that is. 10 or 15 uh, years. Yes, yep. um, they can be removed and another one put in its place. We, yep. are, we are very... Um, aware of the uh, industry and we do care about being able to go and sustain that sustainability is important to us so you don't want to go and after a period of time have to throw the whole fixture away we'd much rather just take that element that board and be able to replace that because the fixtures by and large are just fine so how far back is that currently working like have you got backwards compatibility back to the start or is this something that you're working yes. on now so the nice part is um the, the technology came along from one of the engineers on the irrigation on the hunter side of it. We have got the system um, with decoders in there yep. and that allows to go and have a two wire system. We have decoders at the valves so you no longer need to go and have, if you traditionally, if you had 12 valves, you would need 12 individual wires plus a common to be able to operate those 12 valves. Now in certain areas uh, in the southeast of the US, we found that there was a lot of problems that occurred with lightning predominantly. And so if you had less copper in the ground, less likelihood of having issues. So they developed these two wire systems. Yep. And our smart engineers at Hunter came along and said, hey, we already have the decoders in the valves. What if we came along and put those decoders in the fixtures themselves the and had them able to be operated just with two wires? Yep. So for people listening, that have not heard about decoders previously. We haven't done a lot of content around them. Um, are you able to explain that or do you want me to talk about it? Um, so you, 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 I, I, can, I can most definitely explain it or, yeah. you, or you can take a so stab at it. If you can explain to the people listening and watching what a decoder, like I guess explain how this it's gets sent a signal and I think that might help under, like help people understand where we're going with a decoder style light. Okay, so, so on the irrigation side of the world, um, the, what we have is we have a controller. Um, we have a controller that sends down voltage to the solenoids, to the valves themselves, which allow them to electrically operate. So that's a traditional solenoid valve. Yes. Two wires. Yes. Completes the current, opens the opens valve. Opens the valve. Or closes the valve. And, and so that would happen if you had one, if I had 10 different valves that were electrically actuated, I would need 10 sets of wires. Yes, because you're creating 10 loops. 10 loops yep. or they would go individually. So it would go out to valve number one yep. and then valve number two, so on and so forth. With a two wire system, it allows down the two wire path, you will still have 24 volts in the irrigation side of the world to yep. electrically actuate those valves. But we also run down that same wire. We allow an electrical signal to go down there and then down the electrical path and it will get to um, said valve number three, number seven, number 11, and it can electrically uh, says to, hey, we would like you to turn on, yep. but all the rest of them can stay at rest. So the decoders effectively are 
a translator receiver it grabs translator. the information from the controller yes it also is taking electricity down the same wire path that is correct it's saying you need to turn on yep using this electricity yes yep so the lighting and just before we go past that i don't think we finished talking about the interchangeability of the, the the not the globe but what do we, you call it uh, the, the 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 boards yeah so so if you had a three watt light yes up on a three meter tree and you wanted to upgrade it to a nine watt board yes onto a 12 meter tree uh-huh. you could take that out of a um out of the fitting Yes. And then put another one in. That is correct. Okay, yep, cool. yep. Now, we do have some of our fittings um, or our fixtures are if I have something that is small, a uh, over there, pygmy date palms. You have them over here, right? So, I think we've got date palms, and I know what a, a, a pygmy, pygmy is. is. It's, it's one of the smaller <laughs> ones, and they'll never grow. Yep. So there's no reason to go and have that that fixture. It will never grow. What? It is, it, it'll grow. It's, no, it'll, it's born full size. <laughs> well, it, it'll grow, but it'll never, never become taller than, say, yep. three meters tall. Yep. That'll be its maximum yep. height. Now, if I go and take a eucalyptus or something like that, yep. it'll, it can grow to yep. 15 meters tall. So if it's only going to grow to a certain, say, three meter of height, then you don't need to go and have the, the, the fixture be so large as you need to go to its full size. Yep. So we do have a scaled down version of those fixtures. Which keep, helps keep your budget under control. That is yep. correct. But if you know that I'm doing a eucalyptus, I'm doing an oak, and I know it's going to become... 10, 12, 15 meters tall, yep. I probably want to use a larger fixture yep. and then scale down the board, put less wattage to the okay. LEDs and go on from so there. So this is a perfect transition into how the decoder works. So yes. talk me through, if you had that, so you've got some lights that are at 100% and then you've put some fixtures in that you're running at 30%. Yes. How does that decoder style communication work from the controller, which for people watching on YouTube will be able to see there's a controller in the background. Um, but people listening, you just have to take my word for it. Um, how does that then communicate to those individual fixtures, and then right. what is it? What can it, what can it do? What can't it do? Yeah. So so um, with the with the transformers and the fixtures, it's exactly the same decoder technology as we have on the hunter side of the world. We will go and uh, run voltage down that line. We start off at 15 volts. Yep. And uh, we just go and have it, and you go down your wiring, um, and then it, we will also overlay that signal down the line, and then uh, that signal will go to a fixture, and we physically group those fixtures, and so the fixtures are essentially smart with the boards, mm-hmm. and so they've got a certain intelligence, and once you assign them to a group, and that group could be either numerical, yep. or it could be just imagine your pathway lights as a group. Mm-hmm. Your down lights coming out of the tree is another group. Maybe you saw your underwater fountain lights being in another group. Um, think about them all as dimmable switches, but on the outside of your home, yep. and you can go and turn them on, turn them off, or change the intensity to those fixtures. Yep. So you could set up a, a bunch of lights on trees that are gonna be bigger eventually. Yes. Have them on whatever you want to call that series and run them at 30% of a certain color. So the warm white or the cool white or whatever you choose to have or blue or purple or whatever. Right. So, yep. And we will absolutely talk about yep. color later, later, but, 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 you know, to go just for dimmability, just for dimmability purposes. So just th- those, those trees that said yep. plant material, yep. um, you can change your intensity. Yep. And so you could have four of those lights on a, on a group or, or a, what would you probably call a program? Sure. Or group a, program yep. scene. Yep. And then, they could dial them up as required. That is correct. Yep. And uh, so if you think about it, during the summer months when they have leaf plant material, yep. it's great when they become deciduous during the winter, maybe you can turn them down yep. that way. Um, so you've got this adjustability. And I like to go and uh, liken it to the interior of a house where you go and set up scenes. So you go into there and maybe your living room, you've got your reading lamps and you've got your, your, your lamps there. You go into your kitchen and you might have two or three different dimmable switches to go and do um, above your workspace and then just to create some ambient light. Um, and so wouldn't it be nice when you go into your home and um, with, with smart technology these days, you can go and have settings on the interior of your home to go and say, this is my normal evening. Yep. You can have another one where I'm entertaining. You could have another one where it's either a late evening, so you know after you go to bed at night, maybe you don't want to turn off every light, but you turn off two thirds of them. Some of them you just turn down to a lower percentage. Yeah. So, so you've, you've got, got that, that safety, security, but not functional. Exactly. Yep. So it can be functional. It all depends upon those settings that you can create. 
So now with these outdoor lights, you can take those same settings, you can go to an outdoor setting and then just think about it. You come home of, a, of an evening, you've worked hard, it's after dark, you just like to go and have a, you know, a beer and a cigar and hang out in your backyard and enjoy yourself. Mm. You might have a certain light setting for that versus having four of your favorite friends come over and change that, that space yeah. to a little bit more of an entertainment area. Yep, yep, and obviously then if you've got kids playing out in oh, an area you brighten that up a bit more and yep. everyone's happy okay yep. so that's kind of that second stage yes and then what like the you know the gold medal the gold medal the platinum, high end whatever the, 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 the higher end the so, stupid irrigation shop owner that wants to be ridiculous absolutely talk me through that one yep so then we start introducing color into your scenes yep. now do remember one of those colors in our colored lights is that warm 2700 degree light yep. so i get a lot of people that will initially come in and they go you know what, I love your lighting, I love the dimming capability, but that color thing, not so much. Yep. Um, and then we start having the conversation. So we go and, you know, we talk about how people live their lifestyles. And from a normal Monday through Friday, I'm like, oh, let's go and have a, just a warm, comfortable light. All right, come Friday night, what happens? I'm like, oh, well, my lifestyle changes a little bit. Yep. Um, the kids are at home, maybe there's a football game on, yep. um, maybe it's, a, it's, it's an event that's happening and I'd like to be able to enhance my home for those events. Think about it in the US, Halloween is a big thing. Yep. Um, we have a lot of, lot of national holidays. Uh, we have things such as Christmas. So all of those things, uh, if, it's, if it's your daughter's birthday, events like that. Those ones there is, you know, people start thinking about those colors, but we can also go and take lighting and have things that are very, very subtle amounts of blue. If I've got uh, blue spruce, are a plant material that's very common in the US and they've got a blue hue to the plant material and if I go and take my lighting and if I put a slight blue hue on that tree it makes it alive it makes it vibrant it will create a focal point hmm. okay so we can go and take it doesn't have to be a garish blue or a garish green we can just go and take very slight amounts and and enhance if you take a citrus tree and if I put a slight orange to it it will make the fruit pop if I go and put a slight green to it, the fruit tends to go away a little bit, but all of a sudden the greens of the leaves become vibrant. So you can go and just by putting subtle amounts of color there, just enhance the color of the plant material that's there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think um, when you talk change color, people go straight to like like almost the CMYK and you're just like, whoa, right. that's a bit aggressive. That's a little over the top. But this would give someone the ability to take their 2700 to 285, 2850 or 26 absolutely and have varying degrees of warmth yes yep. um, now think about down lights um, and down lighting as a as a technique of lighting is is very underused uh, we go and see by the numbers um, that that pathway lighting and up lighting are the two most common forms of lighting but one of the most beautiful lighting uh, techniques that I will see is you will go and take a fixture you are going to put it up in a tree you will have the light come down through the branches onto the ground. You have stippled light, uh, creates really nice shadows in there. But that light there, like moonlight is a very cold light. Mm. So I can have warm light falling on pathways, things on those brown tones. But when I put a light in the tree, maybe I want to go and cool it. Maybe I want to take it up to 4,500 degrees Kelvin. And what well, you almost chase the moon, moon, like match the moon. Yes, yep. absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And so individually, if someone wanted to go to the extreme, they could have every single light a different color. If they wish to, if absolutely. They, but the programming of that becomes quite... Right, so, so every time you've got to go and assign it to a group, yep. not so bad, but then within we have an app based um, and so you want to go and call out the names of the fixtures and their proximity to where they are. Mm. Because if you're like me, I don't remember that it's group number 27, yep. but I do know if it's back yep. backyard oak tree, yep. right? It's, it's a lot easier to figure out. Yep. Okay, that's really cool. And so then that's, um, they're programmed into a controller. So they're hooked up via, of, via wire. And, and yes. I think one of the th key things we probably haven't touched on is one wire, one cable, like one transformer provided you're staying under 300 sure. watts. So you can go and have, as long as your voltage drop 
Um, as long as the, the, the voltage is, we start off of an output of 15 volts. Yep. And as long as we go to the last fixture and we have a minimum of 10 volts for white lights, 11 yep. volts for color, yep. you can have, you know, we can daisy chain the lights down that run yep. perfectly fine. If I find that I've, I've over uh, dropped my voltage and I don't have enough voltage at the end, I simply have another wire. So sometimes I can have one wire going back to the controller yeah, okay. or I can have two depending on my voltage drop characteristics. Yeah. But the reality is for the large majority of projects, one wire in the front, one wire in the backyard is usually you know, for a normal sized residential yes. property. Um, and I think that you know traditionally if someone was trying to get fancy with stations or programs mm -hmm. they're sending out wired you know they're almost having to manifold their wires and say that those lights are on that wire and those lights are on that wire right because you don't have that control yeah if you think about before um what we do have if i wanted to do something as simple as two zones yep. maybe i want to be able to control my front yard differently to my backyard yep. um if you're if you uh, like to turn your lights off in the front yard at 10 o'clock people have stopped hanging out in the front yard but hey i like to go and stay up a little bit later in the backyard to do those two zones Traditionally, I would need two transformer boxes, yep. one for the front, one for the back, because I would have independent control of each other. Now I can have front yard, back yard, um, I can have you know multiple zones all within the one controller. And so the power is just being delivered down the cable, yes. and obviously we adjust the gauge or the, the diameter or the thickness of the cable to suit the voltage or Correct. problems so, there. Yes. And while they're on, they can the controller can send a signal down saying, okay, everyone on zone one, turn off now. Correct. And it will turn off, but it won't affect the other lights. They'll stay on. Yep, complete independent control. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's probably the biggest thing that people struggle with initially. I'll get that phone call like, how many wires do I need? If I've got 10 zones, do yeah. I need 10 wires? No, you can do it with just one or as long as I take care of my voltage. I can have one wire down there. I can have multiple zones and multiple control over things such as my down lights, my underwater lights, my pathway lights, my up lights. Were you guys first to market with this? Yes, we were. Are you, on, are yep. you on, only to market at the moment or uh, are, there, are there copycats popping so up? So there or? are copycats. Um, we went, so so what happens is you come up with the technology, some very smart people at Hunter come up with the technology um, and we lo and you patent it. That's yep. the first thing you do. There's just, it's, it's intellectual property. Yep. And so people will go and try and do it a different way. Yep. In my opinion, not as well, because you're like, hey, we figured out how to do it. If you work out how to do it best, yes. the only way to do it differently is not it's, best. It's not best. Yeah. Or, you know, or second best. Yeah. Or, so they try and do it differently. Um, and, and some of them are getting better at it, but at least in my opinion, obviously bias. But uh, I do feel that ours, you know, we came out with it um, and we're still the leader in that technology. And even our competitors will go and say that, hey, you know what, uh, Hunter FX is, they, they've got it down. In a, a, a um, irrigation Dakota system, grounding is paramount. And right. Is there a grounding no, there requirement is not. for lights? No, there is, there, there is some little surge protection when we go through some of the different parts where they uh, have a lot of lightning. Yep. Um, but no, with the two wires there, we're actually pretty good. Our controllers are grounded. We have grounding wires on the on the high voltage side of it. But uh, it, the, with the two wires, we don't don't have to worry about the grounding so much. Are the controllers just plug it into a power point? Yes, sir. Yep, so you don't have to hardwire them to get ground. No, to you, do you can do if you choose to, but... but 99% of all controllers are just plugged into an outlet. Are they outdoor? They're an outdoor controller? They're Full outdoor rated. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. So obviously the one we've got here doesn't have a door on it for anyone that's watching, um, but it would have a door, yes. a lockable door. Yeah, lockable it. door on it, uh, either in stainless steel or metal. And uh, yep. so it's, it's, you know, we, de we design them to be in wet locations. And they're Wi-Fi and Cat5 or Cat6. Right, connective, so, connectable, so you don't have to open that door once it's all done. Right, so so all of the programming can be done via the controller. It's got a couple of buttons. You turn the dials, push some buttons, turn some more dials, yeah. push so some more buttons. for an irrigation contractor, you'd be familiar with the ease of app versus control. Apps, most definitely. No different. No differently. Yeah. So so having your remote control, which looks very much like your cell phone or your smartphone <laughs> device, because it, because is. it is. Okay. Um, so we, we can have those controls there. And so what happens is the, the controllers will go and be... Um, hardwired to the fixtures, but the control of the uh, system, you can do it via an app on your cell phone as long as you're hooked up to a Wi-Fi. Yep. So we do require for you to be able to use your remote control. Yep. We need it to um, go from your router of some yep. form in your home to the uh, to the controller. So itself. no different to if they were installing a HydraWise controller 
you have to have Wi-Fi. Yes, sir. You can't yep. just go, my controller is not working well. You haven't got Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. So no. they can test that by having their phone out there. And yep. You can take your phone out there. Yep. There's a couple of different apps that you yep. can go to to text. Uh, we, and as, as always, good Wi-Fi, things tend to work seamlessly. Yep. Um, crappy Wi-Fi, you end up with that spinning circle of death. Yep. And, and you're out, that's outside of your control, right? That's If there's no Wi-Fi there, that's the homeowner's responsibility or correct. the contractor to get Wi-Fi to the controller. Yep. And and contractors, you know, a few of them that are... That are pretty uh, savvy out there in the world will sit there and take that on and yep. offer to yep. but for the most part you were going to say everybody's got a guy yep. but all homeowners have got their <laughs> whether it's their son-in-law whether yep. it's their, their you know their, yep. their kid's boyfriend whoever yep. that is everybody's yep. got a guy and uh, so as we just go and say and from a contractor standpoint you were going to take care of the controller you will yep. take care of the lights you'll do all of that but you ask that at the location where the controller is being installed that we have good wife so obviously when an irrigation contractor is uh, quoting a job they'll do a p- pressure versus flow test and yes. then they'll get a scaled diagram together and they'll then bring it into an irrigation shop or some of them will design it themselves yep. i'm assuming that the lighting um lighting design is is not completely dissimilar and if you have if the contractor was um trying to deliver a, you know, the highest quality service available they would go test the wi-fi yes where the controller is going to be sure. And then what they'd like, is there design services available at Hunter level or do you expect your dealers to be able to design lights or where where does it kind of fall in? It's on multiple levels. It can be uh, quite often our contractors are are quite well versed in lighting and they can take care of themselves. We have got the ability to give uh, the trade assistance um, with both lighting design and and order all the way up to AutoCAD assistance. Um, We've got our reps out there, our Hunter and FX reps throughout the Australian, New Zealand, US market, which are very good at what they do and are able to assist. Um, So there is a number of different ways of how people can go from a you know, from a novice to very well skilled. Uh, we have got at Hunter, we've got some great training programs. They can jump online, uh, they can do, they can learn basic so wiring. So there, there's FX training available online? Yes, sir, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, so whether it's installation techniques, whether it's fixtures, whether it's um, Luxor technology, which is the, the smart technology device, we've got a full training complement there, yep. obviously, you know, for the trade. So right now, you know, we're in a month from now, we've got, um, Nelson are obviously fully stocked. Um, yes. For those listening, Nelson are distributing FX in Australia on behalf of Hunter. That's how it works, right? This is the best way to describe it. Perfect. Um, and then Nelson will have uh, resellers such as WaterPro that would either hold stock or have available ranges to be able to sell. So they would then um, have a design done, uh, like a landscaper might do their CAD design. Yes. Would if we needed if we wanted to lean on Hunter for assistance with that, would that go to the US uh, and yes. the design would get done then? Yep. Today it, yep. Uh, we've got a design team yep. and we've got the the the, the wherewithal and the staff yep. internally that will take care of that. It's obviously, you just send it via email, boom, yep. pop it in there. Period of time, you will get it back, and away you go from there. Yep. Um, as this grows, we could very well have people situated in yep. Australia, somewhere, Brisbane, here, yep. whatever that. Or means. in countries that border. Australia that right that, that have time zone similarities similar yep. to almost like technical support for irrigation that might be based out of Singapore or you'll have a global right yeah so, yeah, yeah and that's 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 in the future today yeah yeah that's uh, and, and our design departments um, are actually fairly new to us again it's one of those things that we found out there was a need in the industry and we're just taking care of that need because we want people to go and do good design yep. because you know crappy design does not help our industry yep. and uh, lighting techniques and all of those things and our dear idea is not to be a design where we're, we're kind of selfish is we want to go and teach good design so um, if you send it in our idea is that after your third fourth fifth tenth one there yep. you go hey i've got this well we see that with irrigation um that we offer it as a free service but to be honest it adds another chain another link to the chain of time and the contractors then waiting on us to get it into yes. so they if they can be the more self sufficient they are the more successful they're going to be and if they can do it themselves then that's Perfect. great now we, you talked briefly last night about some of the i guess non two dimensional design features that are available how extreme does the design go like obviously we're seeing 3d fly throughs of right. like can you 
We do not have that currently. Not, not, uh, we, not. we don't take through um, some of those 3D designs. That there's, there's a number of companies in there specialize in it and they're very good at it. And it's a great presentation technique yep. to go through because lighting is uh, something that, that is, can be very visual. Mm -hmm. And so if you can go and take a 3D image, go and put lights, fixtures on there, it's a great way of doing it. Yep. And there's a lot of different technologies out there. Ours is typically um, at our entry level, we can go through and just do simply a list of fixtures, uh, create some um, some some paperwork to go with it. So whether it's photography, whether it's uh, lighting calculations, all of that stuff. Our next level is when you go through and take a photograph of a front yard, backyard, whatever yep. that is, that area that you're wanting to light, and then you you yourself have got the ability to import the fixtures onto there. Um, from there, when you say you yourself, as in I could do that, you could do that today on yes. a, on an F, uh, on fxl.com. Yes, sir. Yep. 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 And then you go through and uh, you go and drag and drop fixtures to where you think those will be appropriate. Yep. Um, you can go and illuminate those fixtures uh, graphically. And uh, then you can turn it into basically what we would call a night mode and kind of get a, a pretty good idea of what it will look like. And so from a visual standpoint, it goes a long way to help you to go and just just show your, your residents um, of what your lighting job will look Is like. Is that just uh, plain white? and warm white at the moment? It, at the moment it's just yeah. a warm white. We are talking about introducing color into it that and that will happen. Explodes the amount of, the. I can imagine the algorithm behind that. It's, it's not, it's, it's not it's just bigger. times it by two, it's times it by infinite. Right, yeah. absolutely. Okay, that's pretty cool. And, it, and that puts that um, uh, control back in the hands of the contractor. Yes. So they can do what they want to do. Now yep. that would be a, a daytime photo? Uh, yeah, yeah, you will take a daytime and photo. And then it turns and, it into a nighttime photo. And you can do it, absolutely, yes. Wow, that's cool. So obviously, for the a lot of the landscapes that are being built, they're two. They're not. They're non-existent, right? So, Correct. like in the most raw ver version, you would just like plot the lights um, on the plan yes. where you think they should go, yep. driven by uh, what the plant height and the intent right. is going what to be. Is. And if there's a driveway, they want wash across the drive, whatever Correct. it might be. Yep. Um, and this more just because I know that a lot of the guys we deal with are doing their own lighting design now. Mm -hmm. Would you review lighting designs on behalf of a client? Absolutely. Yep. That's so, so, so our team is designed, you know, part about what we do is to try and better the industry. So yep. if we're going to get, I've got, you know, myself, I'll go out and I'll go look at designs and I've got my, I've got my friends, contractors, architects, and they'll, I'll quite often send them and just go and say, hey, take a look at what I've done. Yeah. And then just give me a second look, a second set of eyes on it. And it's amazing. You go, this is perfect. This is perfect. And they might question me, why did you do it this way? And if I've got a reason behind it. They go, okay, great. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, I picked the wrong fixture. I, 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 my design technique wasn't, could have been better. So I will use that quite often. And you've got the Hunter team um, to go and help with that as well. It's very interesting. Irrigation is such an, a science with so much art involved because of landscapes aren't square, right? Yes. Lighting's obviously no different. Correct. You have a science of lumens yep. and colors and fixtures, but yes. there's an art behind most placement. Definitely. Yep. yep. And some landscapers will choose to, like you said something interesting last night, like you're better off under lighting than over lighting. Right. So as a general rule, um, as a manufacturer, we would much rather have you come in and do less lights and under light it and then have somebody come back and say, can we add two, four, seven, yep. however many fixtures yep. afterwards. It's a lot, lot easier, a lot more pleasant conversation than having me come in there and go, you just completely overlit the property. Now I want you to take things out. Which you can't return because you've well, reused them. And so the, you, yeah. yeah, now you're coming back to you yeah. and you're saying, hey, I had this fixture in the ground, it's used, it got rained on, I no longer have the box, but I want you to bring it back. Yeah. So now the conversation becomes like, well, how, how good a contractor are you? Will I take it back? And then what do you do with it? Then you end up calling us mm. uh, as Hunter FX and then saying, hey, I, I took this back. Now, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, so it's, it's definitely not. It's a whole rabbit hole that we, it's just not as enjoyable. Not a conversation that you want to be having. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, and then obviously online calculators, that kind of yes. thing, they're available. We looked at that last night. They're on... They're on FXL. FXL.com. Yes, both in Imperial and Metric versions yep. of it. Yep. Yep. That's perfect. Oh, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, there's nothing I've missed there. Controllers. Oh, probably the only other thing that we probably haven't talked about is, um, you know, home automation. So obviously okay. that's yeah. something that you guys are 
there is connection absolutely yep. Be- because we are because we have our our platform is via wi-fi uh, we can go and find different manufacturers of home automation systems lutron crestron savant control 4 and others elan um, all of those guys we can actually seamlessly come through and our outdoor lighting can become part of their system yep. so if you can imagine the coach lights on the building pilaster lights all of that outdoor exterior lighting that they have they can now bring our lights or our groups or our fixtures into their system and they can all operate seamlessly as one yep. so it works very nicely um, a lot of people that are in very high-end residences they don't they do not want to have three different apps no. to operate their world they want to bring it all down to one yep. and that's what these home automation systems do so so we work very closely with them um, they're all you know it, it's a great um, we talk about the growth of lighting <clears throat> that's another opportunity for for lights in there because it's another it's kind of we are very good at the contractor because of our irrigation um, history, but uh, there's there's other parts of the industry that are that are really coming on strong. Yeah, that dealer distribution model, um, obviously, I'm a big fan of because I'm a dealer. But you know, it, it works, and you you look yes. at you've got you start it gives you the scalability, right? Like yes. you, you know, you start selling lighting, and now you move into Australia, you've already got a network of of skilled professionals Perfect. that you just have to upskill them in that area. Yes. And uh, you know, last night, the way you explained it to the contractors that we spoke to makes it really easy to understand if a, you know, if a light is a sprinkler and the, you know, the driver or the transformer is the controller and the cable is the pipe. Yes. It's really easy for them to go, oh yeah, that makes sense. You right. Know? Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of people are intimidated by electricity, right? Yeah. They're, well, they're, I am. <laughs> no, okay. There you go. Perfect example. Well, and I'm in the water industry. Right. Like, I'm like, if water leaks, I'm, I can see it. If electricity leaks, we've got yeah, problems. We've got a different, different set of issues. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, because it's low voltage, it's inherently safe. Yeah. Um, and then the installation, after you plug it in, um, then you're you're off and running. Yep. Um, as I, we were talking about last night, when you dig a trench, and you put a piece of irrigation pipe in there no reason not to go and put your lighting wire in there as well yeah so. even i did i know that there were some contractors that we used to deal with that would throw some four mil or some six mil cable in the same trench for the 300 dollars that it was and even yeah. let the client know that that was part of the job sure um for because people want to do lighting after the fact when they're like mm. yeah this takes away the need to really think about where the cables are going right so we, it? yeah it's kind of dumbed down the industry yeah. a little bit um because you know and leds have done the same thing uh because their their load their their um wattage consumptions are so low yeah. you can do a lot more we uh lynn and myself and the rest of the team would spend hours explaining voltage drop yeah. and cable sizing uh 15 years ago now with the advent of led it's become so much easier i remember the halogen most i mean they were using 20s and 50 watt halogen globe correct and you've got a 300 watt transformer that's this big and you can only run six lights like yeah, it's exactly big gauge cable going everywhere yep. Yep. so yep. no that's um yeah look i'm very interested in that's why we said yes as soon as we found out about it that awesome. we wanted to stock it i think it's been the position of irrigation dealers to represent lighting for a long time uh-huh. um and i remember seeing fx on the website and going why don't we have this why don't we have this why don't we have this um and that was before i knew the capabilities of, of mm-hmm. what it did so um obviously it's a the price point on the product is you know it's up there yes but the fact that there's a, a decoder in every light effectively right there's already what's at 100 to 150 dollars of if it was an irrigation decoder that's what you're paying just for that yep and you're getting that into a light so um thank you so much for um giving up well, i guess an hour of your your morning to um talk <laughs> no this through i hope this brings value to our our landscape community if anyone's got any questions about the hunter fx range or anything hunter uh, they can obviously reach out to us um yes. We'll link up any of the Hunter socials and that awesome. in the comments section. Um, we won't throw your email address in there, but <laughs> <laughs> um, there's yeah. obviously a lot of steps uh, that they can come through to learn about this before that it gets to, to you. So, right. um, But obviously, we've got access to you if we need to. So, Absolutely. All right. And the other thing is, um, I would highly recommend if people are interested in the world of lighting, just fxl.com. Yep. And uh, they can go through and they can learn everything from design to installation yeah. to fixtures to control to technology. There's yep. a there's a plethora. We we do a very good job, yep. obviously, um, of of educating the industry, yep. and it's something that we're that's very important to us. Mm. So obviously, they can come here, they can come to you. Um, but if they're looking for, if they're sitting at home on a Saturday afternoon.
afternoon and the game's not great and <laughs> they want to they want to improve their their skill sets a little bit just just jump online and a lot of them are almost like a little youtube video yeah. you spend 10 to 15 yep. minutes and you'll go and learn about hey how do i put a light in a tree or how do i do it underwater or yeah. whatever that thing is i think that's a, a really good point and you a lot of the people that would listen to this are obviously looking to help grow their business or learn more skills. It's often easier to sell more things to an existing client than try and sell the same thing to a, like, you know, go sell a new landscape. Yes. And so by adding this this string to their bow, they're obviously able to upsell a lighting system. They're already on site. They've Absolutely. already dug the trench. There's, you know, their docket average starts to go up and then obviously their, their net profit's going to increase. So, yes. Um, and you know what? It never hurts to know more stuff, does it? So. Sure. Um, so thanks again for coming in I really appreciate it uh, uh, for those of you watching if you haven't um, subscribed make sure you do now we're going to do some more videos around the lighting uh, and we're going to go to my house after this and actually start planning how my lighting is going to look um, but if you have subscribed thank you so much and thanks for tuning in thank you <laughs>